I dropped my packer on floor, and I'm illiterate. Excellent. I dropped my packer on the floor in Walmart yesterday. Please respond with your embarrassing packing stories for me to react to in a video. Even though I tweeted this a hot minute ago, it still weighs fresh on my mind. The other occupants of this Walmart bathroom save money on more than just their groceries. Because unlike my subscribers on OnlyFans, they did not have to pay $13 this month to look at my dick. But luckily, so many of you were kind enough to share your own stories, plenty of which were on par, if not entirely surpassing, the absolute insanity levels of, of what I experienced. <laughs> okay, so here's what happened. As a trans guy in Arkansas, I obviously don't go to the bathroom in public unless it's an absolute emergency. And on this particular outing, we had a lot of shopping to do, and I knew I wasn't gonna make it through it. So I hit Walmart's back bathroom, you know, by the uh, customer service counter and like the photo printing place, hoping that it would be less busy. But the whole store was packed. We were there in prime hours at like the main Walmart in the area in December. So there were a lot of factors coming into play that contributed to the attendance of, of my full audience in the restroom that evening. So I go into the stall, I cover the toilet seat in toilet paper, I sit down and consider waiting for it to clear out, but it's very obvious, like, people are coming in and out. It's not going to clear out. So, you know, when people flush, like, I try to pee and time it with that, or, like, someone's peeing in the urinals, or the sink goes off. You know, anytime there's enough noise for me to mask the sound of my pee that maybe I'm the only one who registers that it sounds very different than the other guys in the bathroom, but, you know, I do, so I worry about it. All that to say, it takes me way longer than it should to piss. And I'm not wearing an STP or anything, like I'm sitting down, but I'm wearing a packer and I'm not wearing packing underwear. I'm just wearing tight enough underwear that it can sit in there, which listen, I know it's a risky game. I've learned. I've learned my lesson. So even though there's a dude shitting on my left and a dude shitting on my right and a thin sheet of metal separating me from each of them, that's still, you know, about two solid feet above the floor, just leaving that area open and exposed in all directions. I managed to get it all done, and as I go to pull my pants up, my packer just plops out and rolls and just the wettest slap on that Walmart bathroom floor. That like weirdly textured gray what, concrete? That like all kind of slopes because for some reason there's drains in there. Actually, I know why there's drains in there because mid pissed all over the floor. But anyways, this, the wettest slap. So fucking loud, so just audible and echoing in the whole bathroom. <laughs> and it took the worst path to get there. Like it fell straight down into where you know all the piss just collects in front of the toilet and then had its tumbles and then smacks just in the middle of the stall right in front of the door. And time just freezes. Everything's in slow motion. All I can hear is my heartbeat in my ears. <laughs> and with my pants still fucking down, I go over there and pick it up. And I hear the guy beside me who's pooping, like, clear his throat. Like, so obviously, like, reacting to it, but not saying anything. <laughs> and I'm so embarrassed and I'm so grossed out. My pants are down. I pick up the dick. I walk back over to the toilet and I, like, wrap it up in toilet paper as best as I can. Pull my pants up and I'm like, fuck. I can't just walk out there with a dick in my hand, but I'm not putting this back in my pants. Like, I'm not wearing packing underwear. This would be, like, Walmart dick straight against my skin. Like, fuck that. That's disgusting. And, like, besides the two guys in the stalls beside me, there's also other people walking through the bathroom. Like, I don't know how many people in this room just saw this. At least two. Probably more. So I'm just standing there holding my mummy dick for probably 15 minutes while I wait for the bathroom to clear out for, like, a moment for me to get out with this thing. And I'm, like, looking through the cracks and stuff and like under the floor to make sure no one's in there. I finally get my opportunity. I beeline for the sink, unwrap the toilet paper from around the fucking <laughs> and start washing it off with soap and water. And then of course, immediately someone comes in. So I'm like fumbling. Now it's wet. Okay. So I'm like scrambling, trying to look for paper towels. Like they only have the dryer thing, but there is a roll of paper towels like on top of an old paper towel dispenser. So like with this slippery, wet, soapy dick and I'm trying to hide it and I'm trying to reach up and like get the paper towels while a man is standing here with his dick out which looking back now is kind of comforting we were alike in that way except it was a very different situation but yeah i ended up just panicking wrapping it up in paper towels and shoving it down my pants still halfway wet so i just had like <laughs> a wet disgusting sticky paper towel covered packer for the rest of my Walmart shopping trip, which was quite a while, because like I said, we had a lot of fucking shit to get. And I didn't even want to touch it when we got out to the car, because I was so grossed out that it had been on the Walmart bathroom floor, and I didn't really get to properly wash it. So I just left it till we got home, and I could give it 
a proper bath. After my Packer malfunction, I definitely took a hit to my ego, but you can't keep me down. My confidence is quickly restored because I know that no matter how I look in public, I still smell great. And that's thanks to our sponsor, Scentbird. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service. With over 600 designer brands of perfumes, colognes, and unisex fragrances to choose from for only $16 a month, and it's flexible, meaning you can skip any month without penalties. So with spring coming up, I picked my colognes this month to have more fresh green and citrus notes. So first off, I got the One For Him by Dolce & Gabbana. Oh yeah, see it has that citrus, but there's also like a really rich undertone. And then I got Tommy Bahama For Him. This one definitely has more of like a clean, fresh citrus vibe to it. And then finally I got Get A Room by Confessions of a Rebel. That's nice. See, this one is like really sweet and apple-y, which is like that little hint of citrus. And they've actually sent me two this month based on their suggestions. The first one is Brioni. Oh, that smells fancy. It's got kind of like a woody floral thing going on. And then up next, they sent me Lethe by Ulrich Lang, New York. It's got like some vanilla, a little bit of floral to it. And as you can see here with each fragrance, you get a 30 day supply. Now obviously top of the line, designer brand fragrances for only $16 a month is already a steal, but check it out. We got the hookup here, folks. I'm talking 55% off. That's like $7. Just use my code TIE55, link down below for that. And one last bit of exciting news before we get back to the video, Zipbird is now available in Canada. So congrats fam, you're about to be the best smelling person in Tim Hortons, let's get it. So that's my story. Now that I've showed you mine, it's time for you to show me yours. <laughs> yeah dude, this one time I was on my way home from the Philly Trans Wellness Conference with three other trans guys and a luggage full of dicks and our car got searched on the way back into Canada. Damn man, I can't imagine what that was like because I was there and I don't have to imagine. <laughs> oh my God, so that was my first year. That was the middle of the night. They stopped us at the border. We all had prosthetics, literally like entire suitcases worth of different types of prosthetics. And when they like waved us over to search the car, we were just like, all right, we're doing this thing. And we all stood there and just watched them go through. <laughs> just an entire car full of dicks. And they didn't say anything about it. They were just like, all right, these four boys, <laughs> they stocked up in, in the States. <laughs> I feel like it's worse when someone finds soft packers instead of hard ones, because at least they get the purpose of the hard ones. <laughs> it's the utter confusion of finding a limp dick that really gets me. <laughs> I have no idea what those people were thinking. Another moment that cracks me up is that they found my vape in the car and they like smelled it and they gave it to someone else and they smelled it. <laughs> Which I get they're like checking to see if it's weed, but it was just funny that all these border patrol people like passing around my vape smelling it. <laughs> and it was cracking me up because Aaron was like giving them like voices like doing their monologue and stuff. He goes, oh, is that strawberry? Oh, nice. Sick. Hey, smell this. <laughs> and, like the situation is so serious, but so goofy at the same time. Like the whole thing was just fucking wild and we were all sleep deprived and... <laughs> It was a mess. The first time I ever wore a packer, I wasn't sure where to place it. I put it on the best I could and went to a ball. Apparently I had a semi the whole night. <laughs> Oh no, we've all been there. Dude, I used to pack with a three in one, which was like pack, STP, and play. It was like six inches. And most of the time I could get away with it and like position it in a certain way, but oftentimes it would like fall down and look very obvious because I wore skinny jeans too. God, looking back on that is so difficult. Like everyone must have thought I constantly had a fucking boner. A couple years back, little drunk at a bar using an STP for the first time in public, not a drop went through the STP, went home with wet pants and a good story. Well, at least you're a good sport about it. God, yeah, I've had some STP malfunctions as well. Luckily, nothing too wild or like too public, but it just always feels like such a gamble. Like I don't, I don't use them anymore. <laughs> my packer escaped from my shorts and bounced into the next restroom stall, which happened to be occupied. This poor bastard was just trying to take a shit and all of a sudden my dick was on the floor at his feet pointing up at it. <laughs> I feel you. See, luckily mine didn't go into the next stall, but it was front and center for anyone to see. One time I was using a porta potty and my packer was just sitting in my undies. I went to wipe and my packer fell out into the toilet. I panicked and picked it up. It disinfected it a million times, but I cannot believe I did that. I'll never recover. Bro, Caden, that is fucking foul. <laughs> you cannot imagine reaching into a porta body. I get that that was a panicked action, but good lord alive. I mean, if I think about it too much, I will literally gag. One time I was at a bus station dressed as Pikachu and there was a couple of nuns there, actual nuns. They were looking at me because I was dressed as Pikachu when I went to put something in my bag forgetting there was a hard packer chilling on top. Oh no, I kind of flashed those nuns. 
you shouldn't flash anyone, but yeah, I mean, damn, you really shouldn't flash a nun. <laughs> At the same bus station while rushing to get the bus to school, I had a Mr. Phoenix STP pop out of my pocket and onto the pavement. I did a little walk of shame to retrieve my dick, but I still made my bus. Those things are like bouncy. I have this cat toy. This is this is reminiscent of the Mr. Phoenix. Whoa. Yeah, that's, that's going places. It's kinetic. <laughs> I can imagine if you had it like folded in your pocket and it was just like boing. You're playing a risky game with that one. When I was moving into my old apartment, my dad dropped my bag of dicks on the ground in the parking lot and they scattered everywhere. My neighbors were outside. <laughs> Did your dad know what he was carrying? <laughs> I have so many questions. Also just the phrase box of dicks, <laughs> like casually. Ah damn, dad dropped my box of dicks, you know. Classic. Not related, but yesterday I walked around Target with the little plastic wrapper part of a juice box straw stuck to my ass. Now everyone knows I drink juice boxes. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's almost the same thing. Thank you for sharing this in solidarity. I, I really appreciate that. Thought it'd be funny to see if they'd really stick to the ceiling if you threw it. It did. Forgot I didn't have a ladder, apartment maintenance came over the next day and 100% saw it. The first time I tried packing, before I had an actual prosthetic, I used a small bag of lavender I had in my sock drawer. <laughs> it ended up falling out while I was walking around Micro Center. I just left it there on the floor, didn't even look back. So, so I was gonna find it and be like, oh nice. I don't blame you. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? My packer stays on top of my dresser and I forget a lot, so sometimes I send people pictures and it's accidentally in the background. Yeah, I totally feel that. I'm always having a... Gotta keep an eye out for Selena. And by Selena, of course, I mean a prosthetic penis. It fell down my leg at the funeral of my grandmother-in-law. And of course, all the conservatives were there. Well, rest in peace to everyone involved. Hello? You got any good packer stories? Hello? Hello? Do I have any good Packer stories? <laughs> when, when you, did you eat a peanut M&M? You ate Reese's, weren't you? No, I had a little piece of chocolate. Um, one time we went to Sonic together, and you had a boner the whole time, and I think it was like falling into your pants or something, right? When you went to the bathroom, you were having a hard time? I don't know, that happened a lot. It was sticking out. Well, at That's least fine. we were at Sonic, we were in the car. No, we were outside. <laughs> this is before oh. I even... And my dick was out? Yeah, your dick was out. <laughs> Thanks for You're bringing welcome. that one back. <laughs> <laughs> I work at an animal hospital. Packer fell down my leg. Dog chewed my balls off. <laughs> I've been there. I wasn't wearing it at the time, luckily, but Goose did chew up my first prosthetic. I was so sad. I uh, had a funeral for it. <laughs> I dressed up. I made a coffin and I had like condoms on it. <laughs> it was very dramatic, but I hope that the dog didn't eat your balls. I hope nobody saw the dog chewing on your balls. <laughs> my dick fell off. Thank you, Reggie. Not my packer, but I'm a custodian and I found one in the bathroom at work and had to explain what it was to my coworkers, at which point my supervisor said, for all passerbys to hear, so this dude just straight up left his dick in the sink? What the fuck? <laughs> that was literally almost me at Walmart. <laughs> I dropped mine while at a hotel pool visiting my grandparents. I just feel like I want so much more of that story. Hunter, I need details. I need context. I need conclusion. Resolution. There is so much more here that I need to know. But thank you, I do appreciate this morsel that you have shared with us. Got an STP and thought I was hot shit using it at the urinals. Got drunk as fuck one night and zipped my jeans with the tip sticking out. <laughs> my friend pointed it out after she had to stop the bartender from kicking us out. <laughs> Ended up leaving anyway and never going back. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, you gotta leave. Your fucking dick tip is out. <laughs> no, wait, you don't understand. <laughs> I'm very sorry to hear that that happened. Did you leave that bartender a good tip? <laughs> sorry. My packer once fell out at Target and a girl behind me picked it up and tapped me on the shoulder with it and asked if it was mine. Thank God I was in a different state and will never see her again. Bro, that put me into a different state. I'm in fight or flight mode. <laughs> this is not necessarily an embarrassing story, but if we're talking about packers, I one time dropped mine into my garbage disposal while I was trying to wash it in my sink. The fucking slurp sound it made still haunts me. <laughs> the slurp? <laughs> yeah, really? Did it get... I gotta, I gotta find... Is there more context? It was a very vulnerable moment reaching my hand into my garbage disposal to retrieve my dick. That's for sure. <laughs> okay, well, at least, at least it didn't get all sliced up. That's good. I don't know why you would have your garbage disposal on anyways to be washing off a dick, but yeah, that is scary. You know you can unplug that 
just PSA for anyone watching, you can unplug your garbage disposal from under the sink. So if you do that and then you flip the switch that's supposed to turn it on and it doesn't come on, then you know you've successfully unplugged it. Just in case any of your dicks fall down the garbage disposal. <laughs> it's like the FTM saw trap. We're going to play a game. <laughs> You'll find that your dick is at the bottom of this garbage disposal. You must reach your hand in and retrieve it before the time runs out. But this isn't just any garbage disposal. This is a model kitchen and a packed Home Depot. And there's a whole group of dads standing around leaning on the appliances, looking right in your direction. You have one hour. <laughs> All right. Wow, we really have shared memories full of joy, fear, heartbreak, but most of all, true, vulnerable human moments. I think we've helped a lot of people today. I think we've made the world a better place, and I think we've formed genuine connections. So thank you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Follow me at Partar400 on all my socials. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.